I think I'm a little bit better than my dad, as crazy as that might sound, you know, just because my dad didn't run, he didn't really train, he didn't train for most of his fights, he just went out there and fought these guys who's been training six weeks. Thank you so much for coming to my place. Oh, no problem, man. It's a nice spot. I like it. Now, like this it is we, well. We live so close to each other. Right. This is way better than doing it over Zoom. It is. It is. You know, it's nothing but a little 20, 25 minute drive, a little bit of traffic. Uh, that, that's very generous of yeah. you. I mean, twenty five minutes in LA is like going half a mile. I feel like sometimes. Right. Right. I just weave in and out of. You know, I'm, I'm like pretty good when it comes to driving. That's my thing. Yeah. Well, I think there's going to be a lot of people that see the title of this interview and go, right. "Oh my God, I yeah. didn't know there was a Kimbo Slice Junior." Right. Right. Uh, I guess the world's going to know now yeah the world's yeah. gonna well the and anyone who is an mma fan right. certainly is familiar with your work for sure 100 percent. do you feel like you're you know following in your father's legacy is that what this is um so i, I always say this a lot like at first if you would think that i was following his legacy or because you know oh his dad was a fighter he's a fighter yeah but this is something i grew up doing you know like this is something i love to do yeah but um so in a sense yeah i'm following in his footsteps and then i'm creating my own but now, at this point in my life, I don't want to be known as just an MMA fighter no more or, you know, Kimbo Slice son. I want to take it to a new level. So, yeah. you know, I want to branch off in the business world and create my own, my own legacy while continuing my dad's legacy yeah. as well. You look so much like him. I oh, appreciate it, man. I, I never had the chance to meet your father, but man. yeah, in your eyes, you look yeah. so much like him. For sure, respect. Do, do you feel like you inherited a lot of his uh, fighting skills? Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, honestly... I think I'm a little bit better than my dad. As crazy as that might sound, you know, just because my dad didn't run, he didn't really train. He didn't train for most of his fights. He just went out there and fought these guys who's been training six weeks yeah. to fight him. And he went out there and fought and did that. I'm actually training every day. I'm running. I wrestled in high school, wrestled in college. Yeah. So I have, and I did jujitsu for a whole two years before I turned pro. So yeah. I have a lot more background in fighting than my dad in a sense. You know what so I mean? So your, your dad was very much a brawler. Right. Kimbo Slice was so much a brawler. He had that incredible right hand. Right, exactly. You're like a well-rounded fighter. 100% I'm well-rounded. And I like to... I like to play on the ground a lot. You know, that's my thing. I feel like in the stand-up part, anybody could get lucky. Like, if me and you have a fight and you throw a bunch of punches, one might land and can do a lot of damage. But if I grab you and take you down, then it's like, that's a different ball game. You have right. to know what you're doing yeah. when you get to that ground. You can't get lucky on the ground, in a sense. Puncher's you, chance, right? That's right. what they call Everyone it? has it. Everyone yeah. has it. When The fight is 50-50 on the feet, 100%. Yeah. Once the grappling get involved, that's when skills come into play. Yeah. So if we take this way back, yeah. you grew up in South Florida. Florida? Yeah, or Miami. Well, Florida? Miami Day, Florida. You know, okay. Jackson Memorial Hospital, yep. to be exact. But yeah, that's yep. that's where I grew up, man. That's like, that's the the hometown right there. And then you actually ended up growing up in Bahamas. Right, hundred percent. Oh, you did your research, man. I see you did. <laughs> you did a lot of research. But yeah, I grew up in the Bahamas. So I was born, and then as soon as I was born, I went to the Bahamas for seven years. I came back to the states wow. at like seven or eight years old just to live with my dad, and then you know that's where. You know, um, I grew up, but the reason why is because my mom was 16, my dad was like 18, turning 18, so they had to continue their childhood. My dad wanted to go to college, my mom was still yeah. in school, so yeah. my grandmother took me to the Bahamas. We have our own private island over there, and you know, uh, that's where I grew up on. Hold on, you have your own private island? Yeah, I have my own private island in the Bahamas. What? Hold on, what? Yeah, 100%. Kimbo my, Slice Island? The Kimbo Slice Island, exactly. <laughs> We're going to build a resort, you know? Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. We're planning on like building a nice resort over there for people to come over. It's private. It's right across the street from the beach. No one's around. It's 100% ours. So, like, when you think of people who own islands, it's like Tyler Perry has right. an island. Yeah. I think, like, Richard Branson has an island. Yeah. How do you own a... An island in Well, those guys or people, celebrities, they bought their island. Yeah. I, this is inherited. Like I, wow. I grew up on my own, on our own island. You know, it's it's mine. You know, my dad passing away. You know, leaving it you know, to me in a sense. And then uh, my grandma owns part of it. So we're gonna we just go over there. It's pretty much my family island, but we all have a piece of it. So we just go cut up our part and build. Wow. So this yeah. is something that's been in your family for generations. For generations, yeah. And how, how big are we talking here? Uh, it's pretty big, man. It's a <laughs> private island. Like, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not small, you know. And my goal is to, you know, start building on it and have like a nice little private resort for, yeah. you know, celebrities and people to come over wow. and just rent it out. And you need some time to get away. It's like a retreat, you know. Wow. So yeah. growing up, what's the first sport that you played? Uh, first sport was football, I would say. No, actually, fighting, actually. 
I start fighting. So it's weird because I start fighting on the streets like, you know, my dad did. It was, and then it, came, it got to a point where I started hurting people. And, and, you know, and I'm in, so I'm in middle school and I'm fighting high schoolers, but I'm breaking their jaws. I'm knocking out teeth. I'm wiring up people. So my dad is like, you, you can't fight no more in the streets. You, yeah. so, he, so track, actually. Okay. So in middle school, I started running track. What events? To, to get a um, 100-yard dash for 4x4 four four relay, shot put, discus, all of those. Oh, like everything. Yeah, pretty much. Not wow. everything because I didn't really like to run too much. That's so. still a lot of events. Right. But in, yeah, for sure. For sure. Wow. But, but yeah, those was my things. I was like fastest in my school. Um, I wasn't my, – my dad had a, a nice record on the, the shot put, so I always tried to beat that. But once I actually got into high school, I, I went to wrestling and football. So at what age did you start to realize who your dad really was? Um, sixth grade, maybe. No, eighth grade, actually. Like, so in eighth grade, I went to a school in Florida called Walter C. Young. And then that's when my dad had his first fight with Ray Mercer. And it was like the biggest thing popping. And they couldn't even sanction a fight because they didn't know, like, my dad wasn't a fighter. He wasn't pro. So um, without, and Ray Mercer was pro. So you bring this guy on the streets to fight a pro boxer who killed someone in the ring, no one knows what's going to happen. They couldn't yeah. sanction it, so it was an expedition. So he had that fight, which was all over the world, all over the TV, beat him, and like from that point on, like it blew up. Man. But a lot of people on the streets, like when I, like our hood, in a sense, around the streets, um, a lot of people knew me because of my dad's street fights. So it kind of got crazy with that. Like That's how it started with the well, street fights. Well, then it got to a point where like literally everybody across the world right. knew your dad from his street fights. Um, literally the world, like... <laughs> Outside the United States, United States, it just, it was crazy. It, it still is crazy. We just, I just did a video that did 128 million views and 3 million likes. Like, it's insane. It's insane. Wow. Yeah. Well, you're, I mean, you are like the living legacy of your father. Right. But your father's name and what he did man. in and out of the cage or in and out of the ring, it, like, lives on forever. Yeah, man. It, it, I think, I don't think it would die down, especially with, like, if you do it right, create a movie, TV shows, like, yeah. everyone loves them. Like, you release these, only, like, Justin Bieber get views like that on, on YouTube. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Not too many people get yeah. over 100 million views. Like, it's, it's rare, especially a fighter. I don't know any other fighter that got over 100 million views. Not even Mike Tyson, in a sense. Yeah, well, it's his name, right? right. Like, Kimbo Slice is a memorable name. Yeah, for sure. Going by Kevin Ferguson, like, yeah, great name. Yeah. Certainly not taking anything away from that, right. but... You're not going to remember Kevin like you're going to remember Kimbo. Right, exactly, 100%. That's correct. Was he always Kimbo to the people that he hung around with? Um, depending on what area, what era you knew him in. So if you knew him in the high school days, a lot of people call him Ferg. You know, that's short for Ferguson. Yeah. And then they call me Lil Ferg. And then you got Kimbo. And then it's Kimbo Jr. And then Kimbo Slice. The Slice came after the fights, the bare knuckle fights, because everyone he hit, he sliced their face. So they was just like, man, you're, you're Kimbo Slice. And he was like, oh, I like that. I like it's a ring to that. And he just ran with it from there. I mean, it's so incredibly memorable. Right. How are you going to sure. forget Kimbo Slice? Right. And that's why everybody just call me Slice now. It's so yeah, up. how'd you become Baby Slice? I'm a baby version of him. You know, he yeah. was, he fought at uh, heavyweight. He was 260. I'm like 155. Like, I'm not, I, I mean, I can be Kimbo Slice Jr., but I feel like that's more if I was a heavyweight, then yeah. I could, you know, but I'm a, a baby version of him, you know, literally. Like, I'm the, the baby version. I weigh 100 pounds less than him. So when you introduce yourself to people now, yeah. is it Slice? Is it Kevin? What is it's it? It's Slice now. Wow. And then once I start becoming like more of a businessman, it's just going to be Kevin Ferguson Jr., you know? I don't know. I feel yeah. like Kimbo Slice Jr. is... As a businessman? Why not? I, I stick with it, then. I mean, it's I, great branding. Or just Slice. Slice Jr., you know? I mean, if you get an email from Kimbo Slice Jr., I am right. opening that in a second. Okay, you're right. You know what? I like that. It's, it's just true, right? Slice, 100%. I mean, yeah. if you don't have Kimbo Slice or Kimbo Slice Jr. dot com, right. you should have that. I'm definitely going to have it now, for sure. <laughs> That's it. That's, I like that ring. It's a ring to that, you know? So when you're, you're doing all of these sports growing up, yeah. what made you really start leaning towards fighting, not just as something you were doing as a pastime, but maybe as a profession? Well... Um, so I, I can't work a nine to five, obviously, like it's not enough money into that. So I needed to make like a decent amount of money and fighting is something I'm really good at and I've been doing for so long. So, you know, I, that I have to fight to get to this level that I'm at now, you know? Yeah. And now it's like, all right, I got a name from fighting. I done did my thing. Now let's do something more. Like uh, it weighs on your body, man. This, this fighting thing is, is kind of rough. I, I turned pro at 
24 and I'm 29 now. Yeah. And uh, my hands are all beat up. I tore my ACL in the fight. Yeah. It, it's brutal, man. It's a brutal sport. I know a lot of people, you got to say, you got to love it. You love it. But I do love it. But I love my body more. I love my health more than the, the sport in itself. Well, what you're doing is you're looking ahead. And right. so many fighters would be 29 going, well, I'm worried about what's happening at 29. Right. And then maybe 30. You're right. going, all right, well, I still want to be able to walk. I want right. to be able to 100%. like get out of bed without pain when I'm in my 40s and 50s right. and 60s and right. so on. Yeah, and, and I've been doing it for five years, and it's yeah. like, I can feel it, you know? I, I, I could just imagine when I get older, like, I'm like, yeah, I can't. <laughs> it's no way I could do this forever. I'm just be real with myself. I don't want to do it forever, honestly. Yeah. I'm, I just did it just because, like, yeah. this is who I am in a sense. But now it's, start, now it's like it's time to, like, man up in a sense and do it the right way. My dad didn't want me to fight. He didn't want me to do this sport. If I had a kid, I wouldn't want him to fight, honestly really? speaking. So yeah. when you did start fighting, what did your dad say? He just was like, keep your hands up, like keep your hands up and be first. You know, it's, it's brutal, man. It's a brutal sport. You know, you don't get paid like boxers do. Is you know, so if if it was boxer paid, then okay, then I could do it. But it's not. You know, it's yeah. nowhere near it. So, well, yeah, nothing against you know anything because I'm still MMA fighter, but. But you're it's saying just the truth. Yeah, you want to look out for your future, right? You and my family. Make, yeah, exactly. You want to yeah. make enough money to take care of. Everybody I don't. I'm not trying to forward. fight to to make a living. I don't want to fight to pay the bills. Like I have to fight to pay this bill. I have to fight. Like that's not. A, it's, you don't love it no more at that point. Yeah. You know, it takes away from the the love of the sport. So while you are looking ahead at being a businessman yeah. and growing that, obviously in the very near future you've got right. some fights, or at least you want to have some fights. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, so what are your goals in the fight game? I used to make as much money as I can at this point now. You know, I, I don't want to fight for crumbs in a sense. Definitely, if I'm boxing, I know the money is there already. Like, when you hear <laughs> a right boxing now. match, you know you're getting paid, you know? Yeah. When you hear an MMA fight, you're like, it has to be the right fight at this point. Yeah. I can't just go out there and just go crazy now. I can't walk for a whole year, and I got paid a regular salary. That's not going to last me now, you know? And then I have to rehab. And then I, so it's, it's, you're out for two years without pay. Yeah. And you don't you don't get a pension or anything like that to like fall back on or any so you know you just got to be smart and there's nothing against other guys because there's people right now training to be a champion or training to be the best not knowing what it really you know what really is involved into the sport yeah with jake paul and logan paul what they're doing right now they're putting boxing on the map like love them or hate them you've right. got to respect what they're doing right now yeah i definitely respect them and you know a lot of people hate them saying they're not real fighters and maybe they're doing it for whatever but just get with the wave man look what's going on like just pay attention to what's going on these guys got millions of followers they put a lot of eyes on the sport they're making the celebrity versus real fighter thing they're making it it's make they're making it fun again. Yeah. In a sense, boxing was like kind of boring. Floor retired. You know, you got Javante Davis coming in, which is a great fighter. So when he fights, it's like you're watching a Mike Tyson fight. You're just ready, waiting for that one punch. Yeah. You know what I mean? But other than that, who is it? You know? Well, what you've got right now is even if you're not on their card, right. people are excited about boxing yeah, again. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I have a big name. I feel like my name alone could get me a fight with anyone, like any little nice little celebrity. And I'm not trying to go out there. Let's just make some money, man. Let's have some fun, you know? I'm not trying to go out there and kill you. Like, I know you're not like a real fighter. Let's just let's get paid. Let's make it entertaining. Now, if you try to come out and throw some crazy punches in, you know, I might hit you with a little body shot or something. You want like to win, though. Down, but I'm you definitely going to win. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> I'm definitely going to win. I'm just saying I'm going to do it in a nice way. I'm going to pick you apart. Like, I'm not going to try to just knock you out and... You know, depending on what celebrity it is, and if the fans don't like you, then I give the fans what they want. But but think about it: if yeah. you get a few big wins under your belt, there's right. no reason you couldn't be on a Showtime card that right. is headlined by yeah. Jake or Logan. For sure, hundred percent. I mean, yeah. who wouldn't want to see Kimbo Slife Jr. Even I mean, maybe you you go up a weight class or two. Right. Maybe you fight Jake Paul. Yeah, I, I can get big. That, that's nothing. Right? Like I have to maintain 170. It's easy for me to get 190, 200. Solid, though, you know. I was uh -huh. walking around in high school playing football 215. I wrestled 189. So oh, my that's gosh. Na that's natural for me. Uh, 170, 155 is like I got to watch what I eat. I can't eat too much. I, you know, it's, I have to make sure I'm running. But it is what it is. I'm down to fight. We could do it at 200 or all the way from 200 to 147. What? Yeah, for sure. So wh why, why 155 now, then? Just because it's MMA. That's why, like, anything over 170, now I'm fighting a guy 6'3", okay. Muay Thai, throwing knees, elbows. It's just it's so much to deal with in an MMA fight. Yeah. So I just fight at a 155 where everybody's cutting from 200 anyways. Yeah. You know what I mean? So 
Yeah, and then I can't move how I want to. Like, the, the, the movements are different from MMA and boxing. Yeah. In boxing, I can slip all the way over here. I could drop down. In MMA, you can't do that. Yeah. If I slip too far this way, I'm going to get hit with a, with, a, with a kick. If I drop down underneath, I'm going to get hit with a knee. Yeah. So you have to be, like, on point, and it's a lot to worry about in MMA. Yeah. Which I grew up doing, you know, I just, just being honest. Like, I, I just, I'm an honest person. So you're saying you're leaning more towards boxing training right now. Um, yeah, but I, if whatever is first, but if, you know, is this whatever first for me? You know, like I, I'm a fighter at the end of the day and I'm a prize fighter now. Oh, you know? okay. So wherever the money's at. Yeah. So if someone hasn't seen a Kimbo Slice Jr. match, right. which one should they go and look up on YouTube right now? Honestly, all my fights, the wins, the losses, you're going to see I, I come to fight, you know. But yeah. it, it, it's a lot that goes on. Like in MMA, you can't do like one thing. So I had one fight to where... I was cutting weight, and then the commissioner said, you can't come back over 165. Normally, when I come back over my next day, I'm 175, 178. Oh, yeah, But yeah. this guy said I couldn't come back over one, 168, so I, had to, I couldn't hydrate how I wanted to. So I ended up going into the fight dehydrated, mm. and that's when I ruptured, and I tore my ACL in that fight. So then another fight, I was like, all right, forget what the commissioner is saying. I'm just going to come back my regular weight. Right. And I ate too much. So now I'm coming into the fight super tired. My body is on, um, what did my coach call it? I'm like, it's like hibernating mode, like where oh, I didn't sure. eat for so long. So now that I'm eating, my body wants to just eat and relax and rest. So I, I was falling asleep backstage. Like so. the rest of us after Thanksgiving dinner. Exactly. Yeah. No, literally, exactly. Now go try to fight now after you're eating all that food. Go fight the next day. You can't. Yeah. Your body is like, you, want, you need to sleep all day the next yeah, day yeah. after Thanksgiving. So... I go out, I did three, 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 five minute rounds, but I didn't warm up until the third round. If you watch it, I didn't sweat the first two rounds. There was no sweating at all. Man. Third round, last two minutes, I woke up and I'm like, oh, okay. But I had to like, but it's all good. It's a learning thing. I never had an amateur career. I never cut weight for a fight. So you guys see in my growth all in the ring, you know, I had one amateur fight that went viral and then I signed with Bellator with no experience at all. Yeah. None, not none. All just heart and raw talent. Well, it's also where your dad fought, you know, right before he ended his career as right, well. Right, exactly. But then back then, the MMA world wasn't so advanced. So he was able to get away with a lot of things that you can't do now. Yeah. These guys have been doing this from, from little, from little kids. They got a little kid in our, Mason, uh, in our gym named Mason, AJ's McKee, little brother. And this, he's doing arm bars at three years old. Jeez. Arm bars, elbow, and knee throwing left hand. I'm like, oh, man. All right, he's going to be a champion for sure, just like his big brother, you know? Yeah, so if someone sees one of your fights, what genes will they see from your dad that they'll you know, see in you? The heart. The, I'm, I go to, I literally can't no more until my heart is like, boom, 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 like until I'm done. Like my body is weak, the power. I, I, don't, I never landed a solid punch on anyone. I graze everyone and knocks them down, knock them out with a graze, you know? Damn. So it's the power, man. The power is there. The talent is there. You know, the speed, the heart, it's, it's all there, man. I'm an athlete at heart, yeah. but I'm leaning towards more of like just branching off in the business role. Is there one thing that you specifically learned from your dad, either in the fight game or outside of it, yeah. that you now carry with you in your heart all the time? Just don't depend on fighting because like he said, I could get hurt. And sometimes you have life ending career, like life. Injury, uh, life ending injuries or career that, ending injuries right there we yeah. go and that messes you up and um i have to think about that a lot you know now i think about it more than ever because i feel like i feel what it's doing to my body you know yeah. i don't know if a lot of guys talk about it like most people say they don't go into a fight 100 percent. everyone say they go into a fight with an ache or pain or that's just how it goes when yeah. you on this level you know it is what it is but i just know who i am and i know that i need i need to be smart like my dad said use my head you know yeah think more and it ain't all about, like, trying to prove a point. So it was so crazy for me when I learned that you were actually training with your dad. Right, yeah. So, like, how do you train with a heavyweight? Did you spar um, with him? I spar with him all the time, actually. It's, it's actually oh pretty gosh. fun, you know. I, I, I would love to spar with him now, which would be more crazier than back then because yeah. I didn't know anything back then. So I was just raw, like I say, raw talent, just sparring with him. I was the only person to ever, like, bust his lip and sparring. <laughs> and he used to spar with some heavyweights and... Like they said, man, it's like your son just, he's a seed of you. So he has like that up, the one up on you. Even though I see it in my gym with AJ McKee and his dad. It's like, yeah. he's just, AJ McKee's just, he has one up on his dad. He's the only one who can, to, can do that to his father. No one else can. Yeah. So it's just like, I don't know, I guess that's just how it works. When you wow. have a kid, they just get something, your gene, but younger, stronger, faster. 
Yeah. You know. What's your favorite Kimbo Slice match? Hmm. I think it would have to be. It's tough. I could either say the the Houston Alexander, the the UFC debut, mm -hmm. or the James Thompson fight. Mm -hmm. It's out of those two right there for sure. And then far as street fighting, hmm, street fighting. Those were just so like, like brutal. Maybe the one I went to. I went to one when he fought a dude, a big bouncer. He had dreads. The guy stepped on his feet and threw a jab at the same time, so it looked like, you know, he knocked him down. So then he ended up like throwing, taking off his shoes, driving the guy in the garage. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, hitting them, putting knots on his head, and the guy didn't want to fight no more. So you know what? We could do street fight, MMA, and boxing. You know? Okay, sure. Yeah, so for the street fighting, I would say is that one. He fought two people at one time actually. <laughs> um, I think Afro Puff is what they called yeah, him, yeah. and then Big Mac, and he finished both of them. He actually tore his um, bicep. Yeah, he tore his bicep in that fight, Man. and still fought two other, uh, one more person after that. So Man. big, big, big Mac versus the Afro Pup dude. That's my favorite street fight, MMA fight. It would, have, it would has to, it would, it would have to be out of Houston Alexander and James Thompson because he just it went, it went all three rounds and he showed improvement. He showed ground game. He showed cardio. He showed heart. So those two fights were in the MMA world where he really. Like, look at the James Thompson fight. They was going yeah. back and forth, and James Thompson was a big dude, you know? His, his, his thumbs was messed up after that fight, you know what I mean? But uh, so after that, so out of that fight, it's, I would have to say James Thompson because he finished him in the third round out of Houston Alexander. But Houston Alexander was a great fight as well. And then boxing, it would have to be that uppercut knockout that everybody sees. Like, he fought one dude through a, like a four-piece combination. This is the first minute of the fight. The dude threw a right hand. And he, he ate the right hand, and he was good at, like, taking a shot to give one back. He, don't, he didn't mind getting hit to, to deliver his, his bro, you know? That was his thing. The fact that he fought a legend like Ken Shamrock, too, like... Mm, that's a good that's one That's so well. cool. Yeah. Ken Shamrock had to choke in pretty deep. Yeah. That showed a lot of, lot of grit, a lot of heart there, too, you know? So if we went to a street fight, yeah. if I was going to attend one of your father's, like, first ones... Right. What's the setup here? How do I find out about it? Like, it seems kind of so, like underground. First of all, you're not going to find out about it unless... <laughs> we don't we, want you to find out right, about it. Right, unless we was cool back then and I'm okay. like, hey, we got to fight. You trying to go to it? All right. So you will be in the car. The dude will be just waiting and waiting for my, for my dad to Where are we? Are we in a park? Are we in someone's backyard? backyard? Back, back of a liquor store. <laughs> who knows what Who knows what he's fighting? A boatyard. You know, it can be anywhere. But that we make sure it's like, sanction off but you need it to like we don't shoot. want it in plain sight right, we don't want right. people driving by and calling the police exactly yeah. right you don't want that so it's going to be ducked off in the back and most matter of fact the police might show up and want to watch actually <laughs> especially in miami we're talking about miami here that's like, true we kind of like not saying we run miami but everybody knows kimbo sites in miami yeah like, so like that's my city in a sense but yeah anywhere in miami will be good it could be in a parking lot of walmart you know <laughs> people going to show up and want to watch that fight but the guy in the middle of the the crowd, in yeah. a sense, and my dad would get out the car and go right, get right to it, get out of his way, let him, he's going right to the fight, don't stand in his way, just get out and just move, crowd spread up, and he goes in there and get it done, whatever Man. happens at that point happens, you know? And then you leave after getting your face knocked in? Well, you know how it is, before the fight, we're not friends, after the fight, let me help you up, give you a towel for your blood, you know, drop you off at the hospital, get stitched up. And then you get your little cut and go about it your way. Have you ever had, well, I guess younger, you talked about having yeah. street fights, but did you ever have one that was like a spectacle like this? Um, nah, I couldn't say. Nah, most of my fights was like, no, if someone knew that we was going to fight, it wouldn't fight me. Well, bare knuckle's a thing now. It is. Would you ever consider having a fight in BKFC? I, I would have to do one bare knuckle fight, honestly. So, you know, David, get ready, man. <laughs> David was on the show yeah, not long ago. Yeah, let him know. I have to do one, at least one. I, it would make so much yeah, sense. I have to do one. And it'd be so marketable for them, too. 100% marketable. Yeah. Think about it. I'm not saying I'm the top or whatever, but it's the truth. Like I said, I'm, I just like to be honest, you know? Yeah. No one will have a bigger name than me and Bare Knuckle and Bare Knuckle Fighting. That's true. You, can you name one? Name someone that... Uh, my, think about what my dad did first. Kimbo Slice, all his backyard, 
accolades, I, I, all the street fights and what yeah. he did for the MMA world. Mm -hmm. and now his son is about to do a professional bare knuckle boxing match. The only big names that I can think of off the top of my head in bare knuckle right. are the guys who had a career in MMA right. or had a career in UFC, yeah. and now they're fighting in bare knuckle. But even then, those guys are still, it's some guys that's there now, like Tiago Alves, uh, Bigfoot Silver mm -hmm. did one. And I, I would blow, I feel like I would blow those ratings out the door. You're talking about Kimbo Slice's son doing a bare knuckle fight. My dad just did 128 million views a week ago on a video. Like, uh, it's just, it's just what it is, man. It's the truth, you know. Well, I think it's, it's. Part Unless Mike Tyson have a son, and Mike Tyson's Ooh. son go and do a bare knuckle, Anderson Silver son. But even then, though, they, they dad didn't do street fighting. Well, so, bare you knuckle know, was BKFC. David Feldman was talking to Mike Tyson right. about having him have a match. That'd be big. They that, sent him the paperwork, yeah. and he didn't end up agreeing to it. But right, right. They were. Put uh, us on the same card. Ooh. Put us on the same card. Let's sell out something real. Who quick. would you want to fight? It doesn't. Honestly, at that point, who cares? No but I one, think you'd have to fight you know? someone with a decent name. Right, right. Build up some sort of storyline. Yeah, here. but everyone's coming to see me. No one cares who I'm fighting. They they want to see me fight. They want to see me knock out somebody. Yeah, that's what the crowd wants. Like it's I'm true. just being honest. Like it's entertainment we're in, and that's what everybody mm. will want to see. Yeah, Kimbo Slice son do a bare knuckle fight and knocks his opponent out cold. Sign me up. I'll be there. Everybody's watching. I'll we're be talking in the about arena. Australia, Canada, London. Like you could just the, the list goes on. Yeah, the list goes on. You know, everybody's do, tuning in for that. Do that fight in Miami. That makes oh, perfect man. sense. Now we're really selling. Now we got to do it at the stadium, Dolphin Stadium. Or something. Oh yeah, it, it's okay. going to sell out. Hard Rock it, Stadium. Hard Rock Stadium is selling out, <laughs> for sure. There's no doubt in my mind. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. I think we've we've put this out into the universe. Right. Could this be your next fight? It could be. Money has to be right, though, for sure. You haven't fought in about a year. Right, exactly. Could this be your next fight? It could be. Who knows? I'm yeah. not signed to... I, I'm open. Free, like a, I'm like okay. a free agent in a sense, you know? Yeah. I learned, like, you, if you sign multi-fight deals, you limit yourself to a lot of opportunities. Yeah. And I had to learn that, you know, um, growing up in a sport. Like, literally, like, growing up in a sport, I, I learned the do's and the don'ts. So. Would you yeah. fight in UFC? I would fight in the UFC. Well, maybe. I'd rather box. I'm just be real. Like, well, I mean, I'm only asking because yeah. your dad fought in the UFC. Right. Uh, nah. I wouldn't fight in the UFC. I'm cool. You wouldn't fight in the UFC? Nah, I don't want to fight in the Really? UFC. Is there right. bad blood there? No, no bad blood. Dana's okay. cool, yeah. Dana's all good. Everybody's cool. I just... I don't know, Dana. I'm cool, you know. This was actually really interesting because I was such a fan of what your dad was doing yeah. and the bare knuckle stuff. Right. I was obviously a huge UFC fan. Yeah. And people wanted to see Kimbo Slice in the UFC. Right. And Dana was basically like... You want to be in the UFC? You got to come up the same way as everybody else. Most ratings in UFC history. For the Ultimate Fighter. For the Ultimate Fighter, yeah. What was your dad's reaction to that? Like, I got to go be on this reality show first? Um, he loved it. He hates being away from his family for too long, but he realized it was a good move, you know, for his legacy. So, you know, um, he did it and it boosted the ratings. It certainly I think did. Your number one right now. I think people just thought because because of the name that he had, yeah. he could go right into UFC. Right, right. Yeah. And Dana was almost like disrespecting him. It was, but he gained a lot of respect after because of the Ultimate Fighter and just because of who he was. Though, yeah, yeah. He got to see the real Kimbo Slice, not like the image everyone put out. Yeah, or, you yeah. Know? who was the real Kimbo Slice? Uh, very kind, loving. If you was part of the crew, you're protected. Mm. And nobody's going to be able to, like, touch you in a sense. And, yeah, that was him. You know, I mean, he could be mean, but that's only when he's feel disrespected. You know, that's one thing he was big on is the, the respect of things, you know. Yeah. And it's not, like, you don't just, or you don't earn the respect. You don't just get it off rip. You know, you got to earn that, you know. So, yeah, it was the respect thing. Like he looked like a mean man. I, exactly. I know people think I look like a mean person. You but, think? You know, of course. I don't know. You seem pretty nice. Because you know me, but maybe <laughs> if you saw me on the streets or something, you'd have been like, wait a second. Uh, I'm like, I probably wouldn't know, pick a fight yeah, with that exactly, guy. Exactly. You know, oh, his name's Kimbo Slice yeah, Jr. Yeah. Uh. But I'm cool, though. You know, yeah. I'm all cool. You know, I'm, I'm very chill, humble, humble dude. Yeah. yeah. Did you know that there was something wrong before your father ended up passing away? Um, well, he was hiding it, but you know, like, I feel like it's hard to say because I wouldn't say you have to go through it to, because I wouldn't want nobody to go through nothing like that, but you know, something is wrong. You know, he kept saying, I'm, I just got a flu or I'm just sick, you know, but he's in the hospital 24 seven. So it's mm -hmm. like, hold on, something is not adding up here. You know what I mean? But then he's like, they, they say you got to get like a, a procedure or something like that. They didn't want to do. Yeah. So at that point he was just ready to like just call it quits in a sense. But then I'm like, nah, you know, let's get right. I'm going to take over the MMA. That's what really made me want to do 
the MMA thing, you know, because of what was happening. So I'm like, I'll take over. So he's like, all right, I want to be involved. I'm going to be behind you, show you the ropes. And then literally, like, he was like, all right, I'll get, he had to get like a, um, like a little pacemaker or something to just to wow. keep the heart pumping until like he gets a actual heart transplant. But he had to travel to like Ohio or something like that where the best doctors was at. So the night before, we talking for hours on the phone. And then the next day, it was like, that was it, you know? No way. Yes, yeah, yeah. Weird story. Crazy story. How did you find out? Stepmom. Stepmom called me. And then my, my, uh, uh, my dad's manager, Mike, he called me and Mike was like, yeah. And then it was like media frenzy. Well, yeah. yeah. And were you living in Florida at the time? No, I just moved to Long Beach. Not even three months oh living gosh. in Long Beach. Yeah. So you immediately fly back across the country? No, nah, I didn't go. Really? Yeah, I wasn't going. Why not? I'm not a big funeral kind of guy. No, that's not my thing. Huh. Yeah, energy's completely horrible there. Have you ever been to a funeral? <sighs> I was at a funeral three weeks ago. How did it feel? It's funny because it's very sad. Dark. It's very solemn. Yeah. It makes you question your own mortality. Exactly. The singing, the every... Well, I don't know how, like, each funeral might be... Uh, it's different. very different now because of COVID. Right, but, but it's like the singing, the... It's just too much, too much of, like negative vibes for me. The, I mean, so the last funeral I went to is for my grandfather, mm -hmm. 97 years old. Yeah. Lived an amazing, right. very full life. So in a sense, it was okay. Yeah, we kind of went, man, what a life you live. Right, exactly. Like, we're it's super 90, sad. 95, 94. Like, yeah, we're super sad you're not here anymore, but 97 but, years, yeah, what a life. 97, come on. Like, Incredible. Yeah, yeah. So you go from sad to kind of being like, let's tell great stories about grandpa. Right, right. Let's it's, remember right. the man that he was. Yeah. But there's certainly an element, and this happens at weddings too, right. where it's supposed to be about the person, and yeah. all you can do is think about yourself. <laughs> right, 100%. You know, when you're at a yeah. wedding, and I was at one of those recently, all you're thinking about is either your wedding, if you've right. been married, or what, am I what your future about? wedding yeah. might be, what's going sure. on in my relationship. Yeah. Same thing at a funeral. Right. <laughs> and now that's my thing with funerals, you know. And in the Bahamas, the kids don't go to funerals. They don't let kids go. Any yeah. age or just like... Probably got to be over like sixteen. I could see that. Yeah, but that's that, a tough thing. But that's to how that's how we here. that's how you do it. All. Right, exactly. You know, yeah. but that's how they do it here. And over here is kind of different. Like, you so see did you? Little kids. Yeah, you know they don't know what they're crying for. They don't know why they're yeah. sad. They just going off the emotions of things, the energy that's around them. You know, their kids adapt to that. Did you have a chance to grieve them? Um, by myself, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but and everyone does it different. You hear right? a voice like I don't know, man. Like talking to him made it kind of easier, you know. So anytime I'm trying to like want to be sad, I can't even be sad. It's like I, he's just like, "What are you doing? Like chill out." Like, you oh, know you what I mean? hear his voice, yeah, still. all the time. So I don't have room to like be sad. I have a lot to accomplish. You know, I have goals now. So maybe after I accomplish a couple of things, I'll take like a trip and yeah. do something. You know, but like, you haven't been to his gravesite. Uh, no cremation. Okay. So I have like. But there must be like a like memorial. Oh, yeah, okay. we have a memorial. Yeah, but. Yeah, I'm I mean, cool. Don't go in there too. I won't go. You won't go. Nah. Wow. What's the point? And I think that's a personal decision for yeah, you. You, you know, know, maybe one day. Yeah, maybe. But I, I could just talk to him in a sense. I don't need to go yeah. to a, a, a site to you know <laughs> what is that that's doing nothing for me in a sense. Yeah. If that, that's the case, I could look at a bobblehead and <laughs> talk to his bobblehead. Like, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Then, like he's there in a sense, like it's more of a, a energy type thing now. It's yeah. not even like a physical. There's no physical. Well, that's the no. thing. When someone passes, they leave a part of themselves right. in every single person that 100%. they came into contact with. Yeah. So it's not, like they don't have to be with us right. for us to feel them still all the time. I'm sure you feel him with you right now. All the time. Yeah. I mean, I wear Kimbo hats. I wear Kimbo everything. So. Well, I mean, that Kimbo. is also you. <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. and you are the man that you are now because. because of yeah. yeah. I mean, if it wasn't for him, I would, oh, man, who knows? Like, a lot of, I had, I, had, I had a sense of direction. I had structure, you know? I had yeah. an, a, a physical big male role model who would, if I did something, say, hey, tighten up. You can't do this. You can't do that. Yeah. You, you know, so, I don't know. And then I feel like I'm about to accomplish great things now, like. And, not, and this is outside of fighting, you know what I mean? So that's like the best part. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good with where everything is going. Yeah. And was he part of your life, your entire life? My entire life, 100%. Oh, wow. So even when... It's been a time... Okay, so there was a time, nobody knows that. There was a time where, like, so I was living in Miami. Miami is horrible. This is how I got out of college. And 
and I'm with my mom and I'm like, man, this is, this is not it. I came from college. I saw like a different lifestyle in, in San Francisco. So I'm like, this is, I can't do this forever, you know? Yeah. So I ended up selling my car for $2,000. I blew the two thousand dollars on smoke. I was like, I used to smoke heavy back then. I don't smoke or drink, like for the past five years. I, I at all? Mean, no, anything, wow. nothing. So, <clears throat> I end up blowing the two thousand dollars on smoking with my buddy. Now I'm, now I'm stuck. Now I'm like, okay, uh, what do I do now? I'm living with my buddy and his family. They're so nice that they're not gonna say, hey, you gotta get a job. You gotta get this. Their their family, like uh, his his name was Kyle. His family and it was Connecticut. So. They're like, my kid can live with me until when, when, whenever. He, he doesn't have to move out. I, this is my kid, my son. I t- I'm going to take care of him for until I can't anymore. Sure. So they was like that with me. They bring me in in that oh, same way. Yeah. So like I said, I always heard the voice, but this is when my dad is alive. But I'm not talking to him because there's no way I could say, oh, well, dad, I'm living with my buddy and his family, not working, smoking weed every day, <laughs> playing video games, and they're cooking for me. <laughs> how, how can I tell my father? Knowing like how he raised me, you know? So in my head, I'm hearing his voice like, you can't do this forever. You can't. You have to do something. You have to do something. So I'm like, okay, enough. Yeah. I get a job at a gas station working overnight at a Valero in Connecticut. And I start paying $200 a month for jujitsu training. So I'm driving an hour from my buddy's house to do jujitsu. So now I do that for like five months. My raw talent, you know, come out. I don't have no trainer. I do one amateur fight. Yeah. I do the amateur fight and knock the dude out cold. Yeah. Right? That goes viral. I turn pro. I'm out. I love I'm how the guy's there. like laying on his face and yeah. then knock. Like a hell of a knock. And then he tried gosh. to buy me a drink after. <laughs> I'm like, I'm cool, bro. Why, I don't, that's weird. Why are you trying to, I just knocked you out in front of all these people. You want to buy me a drink? All right, nah, I'm cool. That's funny. And that's when my life changed, though, when I started to like hear that voice mm. from my dad. And then I talked to him after six months, six to eight months. And he's like, why you didn't call? I'm like, I, I, what, what was I going to say? Like, I know how you are. I wasn't doing nothing right with my life. I can't talk to you. It's embarrassing in a sense, you know? What am I going to say to you? So, What made you stop talking to him? Because of that reason. Oh, just because you were embarrassed. Yeah. Like, but you were in touch all the time. Texas, the text messages, okay. other things like, are you okay? Yeah, you and then you're... But not like, I hey, hate what's going on. What, like, what's going on with you? Yeah. Uh, smoking weed, playing <laughs> Literally <video> nothing. <laughs> like, you know? So once I got everything rolling, yeah. I call him when I'm... I'm working. I figure out like everything he said was right. You know how he raised me, and I'm like, thank you. You know, I'm thanking him for everything. I'm in a parking lot of the gym, and I'm just thanking him for everything. I'm letting him know I'm training. I got a fight. I'm going to do this fight. Yeah. And everything's going good. And he's like, well, you have to. Talk. We have to talk though. No matter what you, whatever, what you think, community, we have to talk. You can't miss that time. Like that's time we don't get back now. Yeah. So from that point on, though, we was talking every day, every day. But this is how crazy like everything works. This is in 2015. The ending of 2015, so I turned, I fought in November maybe. So now we're talking about December, January, I'm in, can, I'm in California. Turned pro at 24, January. Okay. February, March, he shoots this, um, he hosts a, a, a signing for me. This whole time he's in the hospital, in and out the hospital in February, March. April, May come around. I think I'm like, all right, I'm back to, I'm back in California training. May, June, that's when he passed away. Oh. That's how quick everything happened, you know? Wow. So you were really reconnected with him. Yeah. But we didn't really lose too much time because we always text, like, yeah. are you okay? Everything's good? All right. I'm working. Like, so it, was, it, was just, it wasn't like how we normally would talk. Yeah, yeah. Just because I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't, like, yeah. I was embarrassed. Like I said, I was embarrassed. Like, sure. how can I tell my father, like, what I'm doing right now? Like, yeah. I was lazy. I was being lazy. But I, I, I had to get that out, though. You know, I had to, like, have that lazy moment to, to, be, to become where I'm at now. If I would have never sold my car, if I would have never got that job at a gas station, then I wouldn't be here right now, you know, talking to you. But the fact that you had the self-awareness yeah. to know that this isn't it. Right. I just can't keep doing this for yeah, the rest of my life. No way. But a lot of people do. Yeah. And it's easy. Know, and, and maybe it's not the drinking or the smoking or sitting on the couch and playing video games, yeah. but it's a lot of other things in their life right. where they're just spinning their wheels. Yeah, for sure. But for you to have the self-awareness to go, all right, yeah. I need to step out of this yeah. and start, ta- start taking steps towards whatever's next. 100%. It's a big move. It, yeah, it is. I guess when I look back on it, I, it was, you know. I left everything. I left my mom, my brother. My brother went to jail for six months after because yeah. he oh, didn't have no. a father figure, so I was his role model. He was with me every day, you know. So the minute I left, he got into the streets, you yeah. know. But sacrifices had to be made. Yeah. 
you know, but he thanks me for it. The thing about being stuck in a rut is ruts are really comfortable. It is. You know, you can just kind of sit there. Yeah. But the fact for you to climb out and like make something of yourself is right. so commendable. Yeah, for sure. Do you feel there's a certain amount of pressure on you? Because not only was your father who he was, yeah. you share his name. You also look a lot like him. Right. So um, is there a ton of pressure? It's, it's like 50-50. They say pressure bust pipes and pressure makes diamonds. So mm. which route are you going to take? You know, with me, pressure is easy. Like, there's nothing. Like, I've been doing this. My dad used to put me under the most crazy amount of pressures. You, I, I'm, I, I'm 18. I graduated with a 3.5 GPA. My dad said the next day you have to leave the house when I leave the house to go get a job. I didn't have no room to, like, to chill. Like, I just turned 18. I just graduated 3.5 GPA. I'm thinking I'm about to, like, stay home and relax. No, I had to get up that next day after graduation and leave the house when he left the house to go to the office. I had to go wow. and get a job. So that's the kind of pressure I was put on. Wow. So maybe, like, I needed that little break to just relax for a second. Yeah. Because I never, like, had that chance to, like, relax. Yeah. So, but, it, yeah, it was. And I was the oldest. There, no one else got this treatment but me, you know. <laughs> And with, but I thanked him for everything because if, if it wasn't for that, man, I'll be, I'll be lost out here in this world, you know? What kind of job did he have when he wasn't fighting? Uh, he worked at the office. He was like, he had a website, uh, Kimbo305.com, and all oh, his merch okay. and stuff was on so there. So his job was his business. He right. was the business. Yeah, for sure. Oh, when you say the office, my mind just immediately goes to Steve Carell. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he didn't work there. I love the office, though. It's my favorite, so, one of my favorite. I watched it at least five times already. Who's your favorite character? It has to be Dwight. The way it's true. Yeah. That's my guy. I just feel like we're all Jim. In every yeah. single episode, yeah, we're Jim sure. just being like... Jim, he just chill, likes to play pranks, you know, cool. But the, I feel like Jim is the audience member. Right. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, 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 the way he acts. And yeah. Stuff, yeah. But the, Dwight, like, what a character. Yeah, Dwight, he's the man. So good. Yeah, I love everything about him. Honestly. Yeah, so good. Everything, he's cool. Would you ever think about adopting your dad's hairstyle for a fight? There's no way. I, yeah, I'm sorry. I was just going to be honest. Yeah, it's not happening. So, I mean, this is great. Yeah. And that probably took you a very long time. Yeah, for sure. A couple years. I started when I was like 18 and I cut it at least four times already. Yeah. It's been, been like down here. Yes. Yeah, like but I mean, that was also what made your dad your dad. Like, that's that? what made Kimbo yeah. Slice Kimbo Slice. Right. That ridiculous but very memorable haircut. Right. Yeah. True. That was his style. He know how to... You know, make it look look good, you know. And that was his look. They called it Mr. T sometimes too, but <laughs> that was his thing, though. He hated that. What a what a haircut. Yeah, for sure. What if what if a promoter was gonna pay you like a large sum of money? Easy, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> what numbers are we talking here? <laughs> Sign. What's the money in my account? Let's get, bring the barber. <laughs> Hair grows back. Uh, anyone can do it. Doesn't yeah, matter. Sure. Yeah. I don't need my own bar. Right. I like how you went from now. I'm not doing it. To, yeah, yeah. Oh, show, yeah 100%. show me the Money bag. Talks. Money talks for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What What are your goals outside of fighting? Um, to just become a businessman. Like I'm working on a lot of big things. I, I, I mean, I can't really talk about it too much, but I'm I, I'm having I have business in the crypto space. Okay. You know, I'm coming out with something huge. Your own crypto. That. In a sense, something like okay. that, but it's bigger than that. It started off as like my own crypto, and then oh. just it, it, it's going to be huge. Uh, okay, I, I get you involved a little bit, man. You know, it, okay. Yeah. I trade a lot of crypto right now. Oh, see, that's so perfect. Okay, so we just have a conversation off camera. I don't know if I've ever perfect. even said that out you know, loud I mean, here. Yeah, so, like, yeah, like look at that, you know. Um, and then I have this show that I'm going to do in Miami. So that's in the, that's in the works right now, and that's going to be big as well. So. I'm more of a businessman than a fighter, man, and I don't want to, I don't want to, I just, not saying I don't love fighting, but I love business even more, like yeah. sitting down in the office and having these meetings, yeah. I'm more comfortable doing that, you know, that's fun to me. I'd rather, yeah. I'd rather uh, sponsor a fighter and be cage side, watching fights with my yeah. friends and family, you know, than to go in there and fight gladiator style for, you know, I, yeah. I, there's nothing against it, I love it, I grew up doing it, but... I guess, I guess I'm just having changed of heart. I'm getting older. I'm realizing that like, my body's getting beat up and I'm 29. Like, I shouldn't feel like this at 29, you know? Yeah. But you also know that your name carries a lot of weight exactly. in the fight and world. Exactly. So a couple of big prize fights yep. really gets your name on the map. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And the name is already big, you know? Of course. I, I can't be no bigger in a fight world. Like, it is what it is at this point. <laughs> yeah. I have to do something bigger. I have to use my head, like my dad said, you know, use your brains, you know? I'm not, I'm not like a dummy. I grad, like I said, I graduated 3.5 GPA. Yeah. I went to college for two years, associate's degree, and uh, photography and fashion. So, you know, uh, 
It's, th- it's time to start using my brains now Man. before they get knocked silly or something. <laughs> fashion photography? Yeah. Fashion so what's your real passion then? I'm a, I always, you know, like my dad used to say, you don't want to be a jack of all trades. Like master he, of one, yeah. Master of one. So I call myself a, a king of all trades. I'm not a jack. Like, uh, like I'm an ace of all spades. Yeah. Like. I can do it all, man. I'm just just being real with you, like not trying to be cocky or anything like that. It's just the truth, you know. I'm I, I could think, you know. I'm a, like I said, I'm becoming a great businessman, and yeah. you know, people hear what I have to say, and these are big time people, and they want to jump on board and be involved, you know. So what's so, what when you say you have a show in Miami? Are we talking yeah. a, like a, a card, like boxing? No, it's more like a reality TV competition show. Oh, and it's not just from Miami. That you're gonna be on. Well, it was mine. It's, I'm the owner of it. I'm oh, the, man. I'm the host and the, the owner. I love know? it. Okay. Yeah. But I'll tell you more about everything. Okay, like, you tell me off. Camera. And then we're going to yeah. come back. Like, we're going to do a part yeah, two. Yeah, then we'll do part two in yeah. the studio in Las Vegas. Right, exactly. we'll, yeah, we'll do it there. Then we're going to, like, spill the beans a little bit, you know? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, um, it's going to be big. It's okay. going to bring a lot of attention to uh, this certain... Uh, what is this? Uh, like a group of people, like this certain okay. group of people, in a sense. Okay. Well, when when it comes out, it'll all, all everything yeah. you're saying here is going to make sense. It's going to make a lot of sense. Okay. Actually. What do you think is your father's legacy? Hmm. It could be so. It has. To, it would have to be fighting. Yeah, but like, what within fighting is it? Just the. Is the, it the, the menacing heart. look? The okay, heart. It's the heart. It's okay. the heart. It's the toughness. Like. People, I don't know if people knew he trained or not, but he wasn't giving up. You know, he's going to fight to the death in a sense. And that's like literally, you know, what he did, you know. But yeah, yeah, his, his heart, his grit, his his demeanor, he's not giving up. He's willing to take a punch to give one. Yeah. So those kind of things, man, he's he's uh he did great for the sport. And I don't think he gets a lot of credit for it. So I feel like it's on me to to to, to take his name to a, another level. And it wouldn't be fighting because. I, I'm, I don't want to be a champion. I'm not fighting to be the champion of the world. Yeah. I can't care less about a belt. You know, I don't care about that. You know, and um, yeah, he didn't care about that either. He was fighting for the money, yeah. for to take care of his family. Yeah. He put three of us through school. My brother has a, a, a degree in criminal justice. I have, I have a degree. My, I have other siblings coming up that's doing great. So he, he did good as a father. You know, yeah. I, I could say he did pretty good. You know, he had six kids. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. And so you have a brother also named Kevin? Kevin Ferguson the how second. How does this work? So how did, like, when, like, are you both going by Kevin? KJ. Oh. Uh, yeah, he's KJ. I'm Kevin. Kevin Jr.? I'm Jr. You're Kevin Jr.? Jr. Okay, you're Jr. Yeah. He's KJ. Yeah. This is very confusing. And then we got Kevlar. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. <laughs> What's the legacy that you want to have? And we're not talking about the next year, but, like, if we sat I, down 40 years from now. Man, a year from now. Like, if we sit down again, okay, let's. It, it's going to be um, completely different, you know? Like, what I have in store and um, what's going on in my life right now is, is huge, you know? And I'm not just saying this based off, like, I'm just saying it without no, like, people backing me. Like, I have, like, a, a huge team behind me, mm-hmm. like, a lot of people. And these are... Big time people, you know what I mean? Like big time production companies, big time people that that loves my well, the way I think, my my, my thinking process, yeah. and the things that I'm trying to do, they all for it. Yeah. So it's only a matter of time before like I'm just I hang up the gloves and yeah. I just become, you know, like I say, Kim, I guess Kimbo Slice Jr. the businessman. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, the entrepreneur. I end every conversation with the same question because mm-hmm. I believe in so much in gratitude. Right. And I think that if you can be grateful every day, it's so hard to be upset. Yeah. Because you're sure. focused on the things that you do have. Yeah, 100%. So what are three things in your life that you're grateful for right now? Um, grateful for my team, the team that I'm, I'm building that's around me. Yep. My wife, obviously, you know, like she's a big part of everything. And I guess I could say I'm grateful for everything my dad's taught me. Because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be the thinker that I am today and the man that I am today, you know? Yeah. What, what do you think is the biggest thing you carry with yourself every single day from your father? Um, just my thinking process. Who I am is who I am. It's not because of him in a sense. Because, yeah. like, he could have taught me all this and I could have been an asshole or I could have been, like, a jerk or sure. you know, anything like that. I'm yeah. Kimbo like son, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. But I barely bring his name up unless you know already, then you know. But if not you wouldn't know you know what I mean so 
I don't know, man. Um, just, just me being me. You yeah. know, that's just at the end of the day, that's what make me who I am. Because his his name just bring that attention my way. Yeah, his name just bring the eyes on me and it will give me a chance now. But once they realize, oh, this guy is different. He's he's different. Then that's when. Like his name just adds on to what I who are who I am, you know. Yeah. So maybe his name opens some doors. Opens a lot of doors. But then you've got to prove yourself. Then I have to prove myself, right? And that's yeah. the easy part for me. I like that. Yeah. Man, I've so enjoyed this. 100%. I'm really excited to see what's next for you, both yeah. in whatever you know your next boxing match or MMA match, right. and then everything beyond that. Right. For sure. Thank the you. The fighting so much. in the boxing that's just part time. Part time <laughs> for now. Right.